So you may have heard that whole grains are a huge part of eating healthy. And as a medical doctor, I can tell you that whole grains are one of the simplest and cheapest ways to get really high quality nutrition and things like fiber into our diet. But if you need a little bit of help with how to do that, don't worry, I got you covered. I'll be walking you through my top five favorite whole grains that I eat nearly daily so that you can eliminate the guesswork and start eating well right away. Hey, I'm Dr. Anna. I'm a medical doctor. I was trained in Italy. And on this channel, you are going to master your health. Okay, here are my top five favorite whole grains. Coming in at fifth place, we have farro. So what is farro? Some of you may not have even heard of this. Well, this is an ancient grain that comes from the Middle East and is a part of a very traditional Italian diet. It is said that farro is actually the original wheat grain. And what's cool about farro is that it is such a rich source of nutrition. It has a sort of chewy texture and we usually cook it like a pasta. So it's boiled in water, we can add some flavorings and it's going to provide a little bit of a nuttiness to it. Now, I love farro for so many reasons, but one of the main reasons is because it is so nutrient and dense. So farro has a lot of fiber in it, which is similar to a lot of the other whole grains on this list. But what's kind of unique about farro is it actually provides a decent amount of protein. Like the other whole grains on this list, farro is going to provide us some good nutrition in the form of vitamins and minerals, and also some phytonutrients, which are special nutrients that are found in plants, known to have anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory properties. The cool thing about farro is that it is so versatile. You can put it on a salad, you can make it into a bowl, you can throw it into soup, or you could even eat it plain as a side along with the rest of your meal. So if you wanna see a little tutorial for how to actually cook this, you can walk through my step-by-step -step tutorial on how to cook farro. And if you are really interested in seeing an example recipe, of something you can throw together with farro that just takes five minutes. I do have another video up here where I create a very simple five minute farro salad. What's cool is that you can take the idea from this farro salad and make your own iteration of it by changing up the vegetables you put in it, changing the flavors, things like herbs and spices added. The beauty of greens is that they can acquire any flavor of anything that you add to it. So coming in at fourth place, we have rice. Now, rice has more varieties than I could ever possibly name in this video. You're going to see things like short grain and long grain rice. There's white rice and then there's brown rice, wild rice that can come in different varieties of red or even black colors. We have some kinds of rice that can be created into risotto. There is just so much you can do with rice. And a lot of different cultures around the world have some kind of a rice in their cuisine, especially the ancient cuisines of the world. Rice is found in South American cuisines, North American cuisines, European cuisines, African cuisines, Asian cuisines, Australia probably. I mean, I think I just named the entire world. So you get the idea. There's a lot of varieties of rice. Now, when it comes to the nutrition of rice, it's going to also provide us a good bit of fiber. And different varieties of rice are going to have different qualities in them. They might have a different flavor profile from one to another, maybe slightly different mineral content, which can also depend on the quality of the soil that the rice plants are grown in. The cool thing about rice is that just like with our fifth place farro, it's so versatile. You can throw rice into soup. You could have a rice bowl. You could have rice on a salad or rice Rice can just be the bed of your meal that you put other things on top of, like meat or roasted vegetables. You can get as creative as you want with rice. One of my favorite things to eat has always been rice pudding. Now rice pudding has a few different varieties, but one of my favorites that I've ever had is an old Persian recipe and it has rose water in it and even some cinnamon. And I know you can add any kind of chopped nuts like almond or vanilla. The flavors are just so beautiful together. Another family favorite of ours has always been chicken soup with rice. And if any of you have ever read the children's book, Chicken Soup with Rice, you're going to know what a fantastic comfort food this is. Rice is just one of those things that you can probably put with absolutely any kind of food that you want. Rice is great with a vegan meal. It's great with a meat meal. It's great with eggs. It's great with beans. It's great with vegetables of any variety. You pretty much just can't go wrong with rice. And that's why it is one of the staples on my list and in my diet. Now we have to put this little caveat in here. A lot of people claim that white rice is inferior to other kinds of rice, like a wild rice or a brown rice. But here's my thought on this. While yes, 
something like a white rice is probably going to be higher in its starch content and maybe lower in fiber. I don't think that the difference between the white and the brown rice is that significant that it's going to affect your overall health, unless that's pretty much the only whole grain that you eat. If you're eating a balanced diet with a good amount of variety, and sometimes you have rice, but other times you just have other kinds of foods, then I don't really think white rice is gonna be that big of a deal. And here's the other thing about this. People claim that because it is a high glycemic index food that this is so bad for your metabolic health. But I challenge you to question whether someone is ever eating plain rice and that's their entire meal, or are they eating that rice alongside other foods that might contain fat, fiber, and protein? My healthy trifecta that I like to promote because it helps slow down digestion of things like carbohydrates so that our blood sugar doesn't spike too fast. Now, if what I just said is kind of confusing, I encourage you to check out a lot of other videos on my channel where I dive a little bit more into the concept of metabolism and why certain nutrients like fiber, fat, and protein are important for our metabolic health. But the take home message here is I'm not really convinced that there's such a significant difference in our overall health if you eat white rice versus brown rice. I think you should probably just eat the one that you like. At the end of the day, both of them classify as a whole grain and thus are pretty good for you. Now, another cool thing about rice is that when I lived in Milan, Italy, there were so many mosquitoes in the summer and it has a pretty humid climate in the summertime. And I always wondered why that is because it is sitting at the base of the Alpine mountains where you should have a good amount of fresh air rolling through as well as having a little bit of sea breeze coming up over the Liguria region just to the south. But the truth is that the Lombardy region of Italy has so many rice patties. It's actually pretty flat and they grow a lot of different kinds of rice in that part of Italy. And if any of you are from a country that also grows a lot of rice, you may realize that there's a lot of mosquitoes because mosquitoes love standing water and water that's just kind of standing is exactly the kind of environment that rice likes to grow in. So it's a little bit of a downside of living in a place that grows a lot of rice is that it's going to have a lot of humidity and probably a lot of mosquitoes. All right, if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because believe it or not, it actually helps a lot of other people access these videos. And I think a lot of people deserve to learn this information. Thanks for being a part of our community. All right, in third place, for my top five whole grains, we're gonna have whole wheat. This one's probably not such a shocker. Wheat is one of those things that is so versatile in the way we can use it in our diet. Wheat is one of the main grains that is milled down into a flour. And flour, of course, can be used to bake anything. It can be made into pasta, dough, for maybe making bread, pizza dough, or baked goods like pies and cakes and cookies and delicious things. When it comes to the Mediterranean diet, we are all about eating healthy, balanced foods and saving desserts for special occasions. But if we have the option to use a flour that is of a whole wheat variety, it is that much better for our health overall. Now, whole wheat is very nutrient dense. It can come with some vitamin E, a good amount of fiber, lots of different minerals. And there are so many ways that you can actually eat this besides flour. You can eat the whole wheat berries that are these little balls of grain and you boil them much like you would boil any other grain. These have a sort of tough texture and I think they go really well in a soup, in a stew, or tossed in to a grain bowl with lots of other vegetables and healthy proteins. But here's where people kind of get tripped up when it comes to wheat. There's a lot of wheat flour that's super refined and then used in products that have a lot of added sugar, processed oils, added salt, unhealthy ingredients, you name it. And I think this is part of what gives wheat such a bad reputation. There are some people who have allergies and serious sensitivities to wheat or gluten, but I don't think it's fair to say that just because a lot of people have sensitivities, that means we need to rule wheat out entirely. It is also the case that wheat coming from different parts of the world is going to be of a slightly different quality. Now that in and of itself is a huge topic that I am not going to dive into on this video. I will perhaps in future videos, try to study that and give you guys a video about it. So if you're curious for that, comment below and let me know. But as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to be buying a grocery store product that is made from wheat as much as possible, try to either buy the whole wheat berries themselves and eat those in your diet or buy a product that is 100% whole wheat flour. If you can't find something like that, it is totally fine to get something that says whole wheat on it, but just make sure you understand the difference. 
any label on a product that says made from whole wheat or made from whole grains is not necessarily a whole wheat product because any flour from wheat that's going to be used for any product had to originally come from whole wheat and then they mill it down and refine it and extract some of the important nutrients like the fiber to make it a certain texture, which is better in some baked goods, for example. So claiming that something is made from whole grains or made from whole wheat is next to meaningless. So just make sure to pay attention to that the next time you're in the grocery store. And another thing to pay attention to is that a lot of baked goods or breads are going to have lots of different added ingredients to help stabilize them on the shelf. In other words, make them have a longer shelf life. And one of the things that they add is sugar and refined oils in order to maintain that these foods are not gonna get moldy as fast. Now just pay attention because that can be really convenient, but it's not necessarily as good for our health overall. The goal in the Mediterranean diet, and I'd argue really any healthy eating approach, is to eat as fresh of foods as possible. So if we're eating bread that's been in the bag for already three weeks and it still doesn't have mold, we should probably be asking ourselves why. All right, what's my favorite whole grain in second place? Well, this is going to be oats. Now, oats are one of those things that are, again, this is very redundant in this video, but very versatile in our diet. We can eat oats plain and cooked into oatmeal, made it into things like crunchy granola or tossed into smoothies. And then there are oat extracted things. We have like oat milk. And oats are also really good for our skin. The grain Avena sativa is actually super nourishing from a dermatologic standpoint. And so oat-based creams and cleansers can be really gentle on the skin. In any case, oats are one of those things that are generally pretty cheap and is probably one of the easiest ways for people to get more fiber into their diet. Oats have a decent amount of iron, and I find that the flavor is just so nice and nutty. And there are also lots of varieties of oats. You can get steel cut oats, you could get rolled oats, or you can just get plain oats. And oats are also really fun for baking. One of my favorite things to make are little energy balls that have a little bit of nuts or nut butters and maybe some seeds and some oats so that if I'm really pressed for time and I don't have a way to have a healthy snack, I just grab one of those and I'm on my way. And if any of you have recipes for these, please comment below and share with us because I would love to see how some of you use oats in your diet or for that matter, any of the whole grains on this list. Okay, drum roll please. And our first place winner for my list of my favorite whole grains is quinoa. Okay, quinoa, what's the deal? Is it a grain, is it not a grain? Well, actually it's not technically a grain. Quinoa is a pseudo grain because it's technically a seed. Quinoa is cool because it has a lot of protein for being a grain and it cooks in a very short amount of time. I find that quinoa is one of the easiest things to add to my diet overall. I put it on a salad, sometimes I use it as a replacement to oatmeal or I toss it into a stew or a soup. So you can see that it's pretty versatile. And now I mentioned that it has a a decent amount of protein for a serving of quinoa, which is about a cup of cooked quinoa. It'll give you about eight grams of protein. Now that's not half bad for being a grain, which is pretty much a carbohydrate food. Actually, what's cool about quinoa is it's sort of a mixed food, much like a nut or a seed would be. Now I have seen some people be super creative and fancy when it comes to ways to use quinoa in the diet. There are things like quinoa burgers, quinoa patties, or putting quinoa in a breakfast bowl with yogurt, nuts, seeds, and fruit. You you could just Google around and start looking up quinoa recipes and I'm sure you're gonna learn something new. And for those of you who are not quite sure how to cook quinoa, I have an easy tutorial that I walk you through step-by-step step how to cook this. But if you're not just curious about how to cook it, you wanna see quinoa in action, I got a nice Mediterranean diet bowl recipe tutorial for you where I throw these things together, some quinoa, some vegetables, some healthy proteins. I hope you're hungry because you're gonna love that video and I'll see you in there.